Hey guys, Jake here. We're at Pear Tree Ranch and we're working with Remy. We're gonna ride today, in case you missed that video. Boop, boop. We'll put a little thingy and um, we just did that to music. It was the first ride, so for me to just kind of pay attention, just put music on in the background, but we didn't want you to miss. What did the first ride look like? So it was a lot of using turning to fix forward. And if you want the kind of uh, commentary version of that video that's over on patreon uh, with the rest of the juicy stuff so we're going to kind of go over some of our bare minimum groundwork to just warm up get the saddle ready moving around with the saddle i'm going to show tying around that's something if you watched our series with cisco uh, the rearing and flipping over horse that was one of the things that i used to help him and so i've done that uh, with this horse as well to just give us a way for feel on the face to not mean, ah, okay, that she could think, yield, and move her feet at the same time. That's gonna help us with our riding, okay? So, in case you missed our bare minimum series, there's a whole playlist of that. Uh, the long version, again, is on Patreon, and how can we have confidence, yielding healthy patterns, and do things that are purposeful. Okay, the four areas we train horses. So we gotta get all the body parts, nose, neck, shoulder, ribs, and hip, going in all the directions. Stand still, forward, backwards, right, left, up, down, stand still. So we wanna have stand still, relaxed, with the head down, even under perceived duress. We create that perceived duress with things like the stick and the string, the flag, cracking whips, all sorts of things, okay? To create commotion. So I might do things like wave that around. And if she can start thinking about head down in that moment and trying to relax, so I'm just gonna catch her softly here and just say, you don't gotta crowd, you can do it right there. And uh, we showed that session and it was teaching them that when we tap on the nose, that we can herd their nose down and in. Then we made a game out of one, two, three, don't make me shush your noggin, okay? And so it's just a great little check when I start off with a horse. Are they confident? Are they gonna get bothered having to fit in that box? Because there's a boundary over there and there's a boundary over there. And can they fit in the middle? And can they fit in the middle thoughtfully? So we see how she puts her head down. That's about being thoughtful, okay? Not afraid or submissive. We're not into that stuff, okay? I just wanna see that she's doing something thoughtful and healthy. If I just sit here and complain that my back hurts, okay? It's like, well, why don't you do something thoughtful, like go do some stretches, right? Instead of just, okay? Don't stand there and, oh God, you're waving that around. Do something thoughtful, horse, okay? So then we could do some thoughtful things. Can we have backwards? And see how there's a little tension here? Can we back, relax with our head down? So there's nose, neck, shoulder, ribs, hip. And when the shoulder, ribs, and hips started to move, the head had to pop up at first. But see, with just a little bit of patience, we can just set it up again, okay, reset, and try again. We don't have to act like anything happened because she didn't do anything horrible. It just wasn't as good as I wanted. So if I can just reset and give her a chance to do it better, that'd be nice, okay? Just some little forwards and backwards yields off the nose. That little bit of tension right there was wanting to pull our head in the air. Tells of our not 100% confidence. So how do we just keep giving her confidence to be able to move her body in that relaxed way with her head down instead of feeling like she's got to pop it in the air to be all alert. There we go. Ooh, you're okay. Okay, she's got to be able to then read me when I'm yielding. Okay, or rubbing. Okay, I like that. Burpees is another one of the things on our list. Okay, so can she follow her nose and get herself out of that bind? So it's a little bit tension there, head went up and we kind of whipped around a little bit fast. But if we just kind of can rub on her, say, hey, that wasn't so bad. Okay, let's try it again, see if you can't just do it better. There, so a little bit slower, a little bit of tension at this spot, 
but look, she starts to come down off of it. And if we're just patient here and read that tension there, we get a little lick and chew and she just needed a moment to go, yep, I'm okay. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, let's do this other way. Now we got a challenger saying, no, no, you're going to look at me with this eye. No big deal. Turn this way. This is great practice for when we're riding because she's going to have to go from left eye to right eye and not have that tense moment. Okay. Can I bring on that pressure? Slow, get where she acknowledges it. And then you can't pull harder. No, nope, doesn't work that way. You gotta take your nose the way you don't like to take it. There. We get a lot of questions in the comments, people thinking that maybe there's something wrong with her vision in this right eye. Okay, there's not anything wrong with her. Just next time you go to the bathroom, I want you to wipe with the other hand. Okay, and then you tell me about being coordinated with both hands or both sides. It's more about that. It's a confidence thing and a uh, lack of positive experience on this side. So how can we just keep building that up. Because she'll see me here. She's just less confident to make the move. There. We just need to keep putting reps on it. Now, we could just spend days and days and days on just doing that till it's perfect, but that's not progressive. Somebody in the comments, oh, you're so horrible. You're not standing 50 feet away from her and acknowledging when she notices you and taking the next 10 years before you catch that horse. It's not realistic, guys. There's nothing wrong with how this horse catches. Yeah, she gets tense in the pen, okay? But if you spend all that time doing that, we're missing other stuff versus that's a pretty simple thing to just spend a lot of time and effort on. Horse doesn't feel bad about me. She's only gotten better with the catch with going in the pen, okay? <clears throat> but if you wanna pay me to spend all your money with that amount of time, uh, shoot me an email. I will happily take your money and go that slow. Does that make sense? So we gotta balance all those things and that's hard. <clears throat> How do we stay progressive but keep the horse feeling good, not spend too much of the owner's money, but do a complete thorough job? Very, very much a balancing act. So all we did to make that progress, the catching, well, I just went in there a couple extra times a day and hung out and said, hey, what's up? Put the rope on her, took the rope off, and that was it. She went, oh, okay. Took all of a day instead of once a day getting haltered when I'm riding 12 to 15 horses a day. Okay, so we just gotta be aware of some of that stuff. Helps helps and understand the answer. All right, so this is getting better. You can see it's a pattern as well as confidence in yielding. All right, we're gonna go forward on a circle. Good. We need going and coming back. Going. When we feel the pressure come on, so the halter and the lead got tight, then come back. 
and then go and then come back. Call this drift and teeter. Drift them out there, allow them to teeter on back, okay? You could also say this is playing approach and retreat with forward and then forward and turning. So now I might catch her and go, hang on, I need you to go a little bit further. My leg's gonna need to be able to do that if I'm gonna start putting the leg on the ride. See right there, I got a little life. And then right before she quits, I get a little bit of life. And then right before she quits, get a little bit of life. Ah. <clears throat> and then because you hit that canner, now I didn't love how we got there, kind of jump and fuss, but she made it more forward. Look, and she quickly changed. Okay, so bothered, look and chew, means less bothered. We can get all sciency and talk about nervous system and sympathetic and parasympathetic. Let's just keep it simple. If they lick and chew, that just meant they were bothered a moment ago and they got less bothered. So now before she quits, a little bit of gas. Wait for it, there's the moment she's about to quit, a little bit of gas. See the nose starts to tip in, right before she quits, a little bit of gas. And it's just catching her and going, not yet, now you can. Wait one more minute, one more minute, right? Like raising kids, mommy and daddy are talking, you need to wait your turn. And then just, hey, you can stand straight. You can stand straight. Huh, you're a good kid. You're a good kid. Nose, neck, shoulder, ribs and hip. Good. Nose, neck, shoulder. So now we've got the direction, we're going left. Then we'll get on the gas pedal, one piece at a time. Catch her and softly drift her back out. And then right before she quits, can I catch her? Not quite, we'll just hang in there. Right before she quits, can I catch her and drift her back out? There. And yeah, yeah, come on, good. Catch, drift her back out, catch, drift her back out. So she gotta learn to not take offense when I say we're not done yet. I like your idea of coming back. There, there, see she held the connection and waited for me to quit all the way. Great job, baby. You're a good kid. You're a good kid. Okay? I don't wanna push the canner on the 12 foot rope because I'm really pleased with what we kinda of got going here. I'm gonna do the canner once we're saddled, okay? So I'm making a conscious decision there to um, wait on that. Now, so far the only thing we didn't do was some sideways. And that would be all my bare minimum groundwork list. Again, I, I don't like saddle on horses that can't do that list. because I know what hides in the inability to do some of these things, what it has the potential to turn into. So sideways, relaxed, with your head down. I'm gonna mostly drive the nose and neck and then softly start offering a feel on the lead rope to start to lead that nose down. And if they can move forward with their head down and relaxed or in a down position, we had a good chance that they're doing so relaxed. She just saw up on the fence, no big deal. But that doesn't mean that you get to do that. So look at the benefit of having the burpees work. Just turn her back. It's like when you're a kid and you went the wrong way. Mom said, uh, you march yourself right back the way you came from and try again, make a better choice. There we go, there we go. They also have to have some confidence 
to move with their head down like that and feeling the, the pressure of the fence. There we go, there we go, there we go. Good job. Yeah, well, you can come in straight. There we go. He was a good kid. Good. Take a deep breath. And then the other thing. You gotta be good at and then. Okay, really good at and then. I want some uh, fried rice and an uh, egg roll. And then? And some lo mein noodles. And then? Right? What movie is that from? Leave that one in the comments if you know it. Dude, sweet. Okay. So look, she backed up to give herself some confidence from the person up on the fence, but she's not quite sure what's going on. Why are you pointing that thing at me? It's just a camera. It's just a camera. Again, not letting her pull. Not letting her fuss. And just kind of hanging in there till she takes her nose off of that feel and starts to fit in the box. There we go. And it takes time, right? We had to give her long. That's a good sign. Yeah, there's a big lick and chew. They start rubbing their face on their leg. A lot of times that relaxation really comes after that. So if you get your horse that wanting to stop and rub their face on their leg, just let them. It's fine. You can always spank them, spur them, pull on them more later. Just give them that moment. There we go. Good. Oh, weird. We just stopped to get a little sniff sniff on the saddle. Okay. All right. Here, will you grab me that? blue handled brush. I'm just gonna run a brush on her. Get her saddled up. Give me there. <clears throat> Probably just take this moment and tie. I'm not gonna, well, maybe I will saddle her tied. When you saddle a horse tied, you run the risk of causing claustrophobia and fear. So when I start saddling horses, I start untied good girl where they can kind of learn to be relaxed and hold that standstill on their own bring your booty back thank you look how nice that's working Yep, you're right. Get the crusties off. Shedding season is here. But I do think that we should get to where we can saddle a horse tied. Okay, so just because it makes them feel claustrophobic doesn't mean don't do it. It just means be mindful, okay? I really like the idea of the only rule is there are no rules. We can have that be rule number one. Rule number one is there are no rules. And kind of stick to some guidelines. It's easy to make a rule about never saddle a tied horse, never do this, never do that. It's not good for the horses long term. Okay. 
No crusties on our belly. There we go. You're a good kid. That's some pretty good brushing and saddling, huh? All right, we're just gonna move around. Good job. Good job. I'm gonna move around with the saddle on for a moment and then we'll get set up to tar. Okay. Good. I remember if we talked about it, I think I did talk about it in one of the videos, but one of the things that she was having a hard time with, and I'll just mention and show it again, that's nice, is handling about the face. So it's like you could kind of offer her to touch, touch my hand. She didn't know how to not touch it and then bite, okay? And uh, it was almost like a bit of a pattern. And so if I can, I'll squeeze this nose and just kind of be playful with it. And if you squeeze it just right, you get where they'll release that mouth and release that tension. And you're doing it from the outside, so you're not sticking your fingers in their mouth. And then they can just get that jaw to start to release and relax. They let that tension go. You can watch her at times and she'll carry some wrinkles in her nose when she's holding her tension. Sometimes she'll take the two little bits of her nosey and stick them out. It's like her mind is, is leaving and you can see it in that little bit. So doing little things like that, like see how widow squishy, 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 getting real soft and, and relaxed and confident there. It's kind of nice progress on that. So it just tells me, again, it's another measuring stick of where's the horse at? And that helps me then adapt to what do they need from me? Okay, we got to start with that. What do they need from me? but then they got to start adapting to us and getting with the program a little bit too. All right. So it kind of felt right. So I had a little cluck cluck and let's see if we can't can or I saw you were awesome, huh? That was easy. That was easy. The canter on the shorter rope was hard. We didn't know how to quite yield. And that's kind of coming together from what we're gonna do with the tying around. And they get understanding of the pressure on their face while they're moving the feet and how they can just flex their nose and neck a little more to create a bit of a buffer. They don't run into that rope so hard. There, love it. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay, we're gonna set this up <clears throat> and we've prepared the horse with the burpees, right? Here, let's just, we'll do it again even with the saddle on. Come here, child. There you go. Okay, so behind the saddle horn. <clears throat> and we did it without the saddle so there's no leverage point. 
And when I have the saddle and the horns there, you can actually pull harder on them. I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying you could. <clears throat> and so it signs them up. There's a bit more commitment there where if I just start to pull, like she can feel more pressure. You can't do that with it just over the withers because you'll just pull the rope over their head. Now, instead of just pulling harder, I'm gonna hurt her a little bit with that part of the rope and allow her to find her way to squeeze through there. Okay, we'll do this side again. This is our less confident side with her booty passing through there. A little hurting on that. Good. Okay. So she knows how to get herself out of a bind, move her feet, bend her nose and neck. Okay. If I can have them do that, I'll start getting where I can put this behind here, okay? Find a little relaxation and some bending. And sometimes when I'm doing this, I'll just kind of, if I could just get it tied a little bit, I can let her dance around all on her own and find her own comfort. I don't have to be involved in it. That's when we get perfect releases. Okay, because the human has a tendency to want to pull. Okay, we want to pull on the rope. And so when they get that slack, we just keep taking it. I know, you'll make it. There you go. We only got a couple of days of doing this. And we'll just do a little clove hitch over the horn. Okay, again, we showed this in the series with Cisco. And this is something that I learned about, a way to have the horse in charge of their release. There, when she flexes, that'll go loose. So I don't have to have good timing. You should work on having good timing, but you don't have to. Okay, and if you can push down on that and they shape and make that slack, you're doing pretty good. Okay. Now, you can make it too long where they can get their nose to the other side and get their chin tucked and kind of get stuck. So you don't want to have it be too long. I know we're trying to be nice and easy with the horse, but you want to be mindful that this actually is easier on her. Look, she can get plenty of slack in that rope and find that relief. Okay, so if I can have that at a standstill, here, there you go. Then I'd start driving them around. Okay, and what she's gonna find is how does she go forward with that feel on her face? She doesn't know how to do that very well without a lot of brace in her neck. You see the muscles in her neck? It gets all tight. And what she'll start to find is when she takes her nose, neck, and shoulder out, there, see how it went that way? I can't do any pressure here. I can do pressure here. And I bumped her sideways when they go sideways, they give themselves all this room <clears throat> to soften the rope. And when that softens, they feel like they can go forward. With the feel on their face, we can make them feel trapped where they can't go forward. And so if I could just catch her right there and have her go forward, that'd be great. She missed, so we'll just say, set up and try again. Right there, if I could catch and bump her forward. Great. Right there, if I could catch, didn't work, no big deal. We're going to the left. I like that she turned towards me and not away. <clears throat> right there, perfect. See if I can just get that little catch where I just, wait, hang on a second. Oh, that's better, thanks. That means she's kind of ready to be yielding instead of just, ha, ah! and bothered. Good. So now, we can challenge her with a little bit tighter. It would do a lot, just a little bit. And she'll start finding her way to be able to travel with her neck that much softer. And what this tells me, if we got in trouble and I got a hold of her, what's she gonna do? Is she gonna shape or is she gonna just charge through it? So right now, I'm on the gas pedal. Vroom, vroom, yeah, giddy up, horsey. 
okay? But if I get off the gas pedal, does she come on down and put slack in the rope? And that's what we're training for, okay? Good job. Let's do that one again. Good. Rum, okay? Rum. Get on the engine. Get on the gas pedal. What happens when we get all vroomed up? And then what happens when we get off? Notice that she's not going bump, ah, spin around. She goes, oh, make it slack again. Oh, make it slack again. Okay. Again, we just did this a couple of days. We got two rides. So this is the third session. Each day I rode or I did this. It's a good kid. Okay. Move over here, please. Thank you. And again, this isn't something I encourage people at home to do. This is a professional thing. So if you're wanting to experiment and learn more about this, get somebody to coach you, okay? You could make a mess doing this. And there's people that'll use something like this where it's just way too long, the horse is tied, and they don't actually ever get any relief. But I hope you can see when she finds the slack, Okay, that's what we need to find out. What's she gonna do to give herself slack? Is she gonna pull and rear and jump? Or is she gonna put her head down and in and soften? That's the stuff we need to see. What's gonna happen? Good. You get scared? Hmm? That flag just jumped up and bit me. That's a easy what movie is that from, right? Make sure that they're confident at a standstill, that she knows. There, see, when she puts her head down and softens. Good. Yeah, that's what we want to see. We don't want to see that, but I want to see if you're going to try that. Okay. Instead of putting her head down and in, she's throwing it up in the air looking for comfort. There's better. Good. Now, a few things you could do to kind of help. You could lower the halter so it gets a little lower on their nose. So uh, it helps with the angle of the pull. You gotta be mindful. You don't wanna put it so low that it gets into the soft bit of their nose okay you be mindful of those things and i'm just literally a little much that's all we're snugging it up just trying to looking for that little sweet spot where it's a little harder for her to throw her head like that a little easier to figure out how to soften and then go prepare to position for the transition get ready get set then go There, see, it made it harder for her to do that. That's what I'm looking for. I just need it to be harder for her to do that. Yeah. If it's harder for her to do that, she'll start thinking about something different. But I want her to choose the something different. I don't want to just try to tell her. So she's set up in a bind where she can kind of find that on her own. There. 
There, see how she's trying to find it with her nose? She went down and in and then a little backwards. Better. You see right there, a little lippy trying to go. It's just telling us the mind hasn't settled yet. That's why I haven't yawed to the canner yet. I don't need to push harder here. I just need to give her time. She's working at it. She's working at it. Just need to be patient for her to find it. There it's softening, there it's softening. Notice she chose the smaller circle. There. She'd get where she could like right there, just take her front end across. It'd come, it'll come. Little more gas pedal. Catch it, push it back, aha, there. See how it bumped off of that and came down? Imagine if I was trying to ride and hold this, she'd be just plowing her face all up in there. That's kind of how she's ended up here. She's just been a plow horse with her face among so many other things there. And if that works and she just pushes through with her nose and jumps in the air, she gets, you know, horses don't think of it in the get away with it, it's just that it worked. She found comfort doing that behavior. It's not finding any comfort. So she's starting to get where she'll find little glimmers of tucking her nose and find some comfort. There's a little bit. Almost made it. Okay, we're gonna get on the gas here. Love it. Good. And I just need little bits. There, look, she's trying to get that nose down. So I would just do days of this and just let her work at that. She's working at it herself. I'm involved, I tied her and I'm out here putting the gas on her. I've set up the situation. But she's starting to find some comfort on her own by hunting slack versus pushing through pressure. Okay, good kid. All right, we're gonna put our hackamore on, rope hackamore. The first day I just Kind of was seat of my pants, like, up. Oh, it's time to ride. We found a really cool arrow point in the arena. Turned up out of the sand. Like, it's my lucky day, time to ride that horse. And then, so I just tied the, that's good, I tied the halter with the lead rope. So all we did in our first two rides is just walk and we'll probably do a fair bit of that because really all I'm looking for is confidence and relaxation with some forward. I don't need to walk track canter right now to be successful. I need her to be happy and confident. <clears throat> I'm just clucking that this is pressure and then just putting a little lift up on that rope. So see, there wasn't a lot of direction. She had to kind of hunt where was the answer. So that gave her a little bit of pressure out there. And then make sure there's enough relief when she gets here that it feels good. There we go. 
So the first day, a little bit of the second, I kind of started with some backwards. Normally you would want to kind of start with forward, but to help her kind of feel like I could control her in a, in a way that wasn't such a big deal and we've worked on it from the ground. Okay, we did the two line driving to kind of prep her for that. If I could just take a hold of her face and draw her back, that kind of gives me a little bit of control. Now, what we're, what you would have saw, and I, I did a long uh, kind of chat about this over on Patreon again, is turning fixes forward, okay? So now, when I lead those feet off, just in two rides, she's found some comfort at moving her feet forward. Now, that's tense, right? It doesn't feel great. Like, I'm not super excited to be riding a horse that tense, but this is kind of where she's at, and we're, there we go. Kind of winning there. There. So if I could just lead her off, so I'm not doing anything with my feet, so all of you, oh my gosh, what a bad man, Jake Bierenbaum, he wears spurs. Oh. I'm not even touching the horse. Okay, these are as sharp as a silver dollar. They're perfectly round. Okay. Littler spurs are more harsh than bigger spurs, depending on the number of points. So for those of you that didn't know that, now you know. There we go. Harshness of the spur is not due to the size. How you use it and the sharpness of the points. Okay. And these spurs don't have any points. So little itty bitty English spurs are way sharper because they're just one little thing. Okay? We got to get educated before we poo poo on people with that stuff, you guys. I know plenty of you guys have said so many nice things for us. So proud of being a part of the process. And it just means a lot to us to share this with you. Okay share our every day, what we're doing here. So if I can just lead her around up here from the top of her back, and just allow those feet to untrack and not have it be a big deal, she's just gonna get more and more relaxed. There, see? And look, we're going with that right eye. All right, just leave her be. Thank you. So I'll put this hand here to push my butt, not pull. You push down, helps keep your butt down. And I'll sit real low and, and tuck. To just kind of be hunker down. And just leading her feet off. And it's like she can kind of walk wherever she wants to walk. There. Hmm. Nose, neck, shoulder, ribs, hip. What we're starting to feel a little bit is it's less that she's uh, kind of frozen and sticky nervous. She's still that a little bit, for sure. Okay, But it's that I'm not riding with much life. So once I get her going, she's kind of realizing I'm not doing a whole lot, <clears throat> which is meaning we're starting to get to the point where I could almost ride her forward with some leg. And that'd be nice when we get to that point. We're not quite there yet. She's gonna startle and spook if I bump her in the belly. And you saw what happened just with the flag falling behind her. So we still got plenty of ways to go. But the fact that I can start putting hours in like this and just kind of cruising around and she can wear me and I can just pet on her, like right here a little bit. Well, can you see my legs are just starting to squeeze a little bit? Okay. And it's, nothing's happening, but if I just did that little squeeze and just kind of let her off, did that little squeeze, like see that little squeeze almost got her going. So there, and then the squeeze could come off. And I just got a feel for that. No, I didn't turn my toes out. I didn't put much life in my calves. I squeezed from way up here, okay? Hip abductor and adductor muscles. 
One of them opens and one of them closes. Okay, so when you go to the gym and you're doing your leg workouts, quit spending so much time on the hamstring machine, kicking your own butt. Spend a little more time on the old spread the legs, close the legs machine. Keep your leg off the horse, put your leg on the horse from way up in your hips. There we go. See, now we're starting to get kind of sticky feet in a little more relaxed manner. Okay, how's our back up feeling? Good. All right, so I'm gonna just play a little bit and get a little livelier. So I did a little bump bump with my right leg and I did a little tap tap with the rein. So you can do a little tap tap. So just add a little more life. And like here's a little leg, a little bump bump, ever so soft, and then just kind of lead her up. Here's a little, there we go. Just so she starts feeling me in different ways. And I'm not really bumping her, the leg is just lively. Okay? Like the most energy that's happening is the little leather is just barely tapping off the side of the stirrup. Okay? It's hardly even bumping her. But there's life there. If I can get her to start feeling my life, and then I'll just keep turning her to give her somewhere to go. Okay, then I can slowly start adding some life. And I can add some frequency to my turns. Okay, turn, release, turn, release, turn, release. Now all of a sudden we're riding out here. Holy cow, we're out by the rail. Good. Now look, I can allow her to go back in here and find some comfort. There's nothing wrong with that. No, I might ride her back out there. Yep. A little turn and then a release. And a little turn and then release. Good. And I'll just take her out here. Give her a little, that a girl. A little soft feel on the nose. Wait for her. There you go. Now I'd like her chin to tuck, but I only got so much I can do right now. So we're just going to have to go noted. Ah. Ah, what a weird sound. Okay, can't see it, my right leg is flapping. I picked that leg because it's the inside to start riding her out. Okay, and then I'm gonna just kind of guide her with this rein a little bit. Because we're still in a bit of a directing, uh, leading rein way of going. There we are. There we go. Okay. That wind picks up. She just sees the wind flag over here fluttering behind her. No big deal. Now look, I can start taking this rein here and this, and could I get a little start of a leg yield? Let's just see. Let's just see what we could do. There's a little start. And this is the same move there that when I had her nose tied around, and she started to step her shoulders there, out and across, with her nose flexed in. That's the beginnings of a leg yield. So if I could just have her tipped a little bit. No, not throwing your hip at my leg. Okay, there's no spur involved here. Just flapping my leg a little bit. There's a little flexion, but that way. Okay, and then a little leg. There we go. If I can start getting these little leg yields set up, I start setting myself up for uh, some good serpentines. Because if I could ride her over there, look, I just gave myself room here now that she could turn and stand out and around. No, we're not doing that. That's silly business. There you go. See? Okay. There. Turning fixes forward, not hawing and spurring harder. Turning. There. Now I can do the leg. Oh, turning. Then I can do the leg a little bit. I'll shake my boot.
there. That shake, okay, probably can't hear it, but it rattles, it rattles the spur in the thing and just makes a little chink a chink a chink a chink. Okay, it doesn't even touch the horse. It just creates stimulation. My boots just shaking back and forth like that. Okay, kind of got where you could see it. Just like that. There, when that foot steps forward, that'll be the wind. Okay, turning there, that's the wind. By the way, I'd like to go over here. There we go. Now, by the way, I'd like to go over here. Good. By the way, I'd like to go over here. There. Offering her more leadership and guidance, little bits at a time. Stay up. She's real fragile, right? She wants to, well, I'm just going to take my toys and go home. Screw you guys. Get all upset. There we go. She's got to be able to handle a little bit of pressure. There we go. That's a girl. That's a girl. Now let's find a little comfort out here. Let's just hang out over here. That's a way. So we've got some forward and some backwards. We've got little baby blips, a tip of the nose and the neck. Okay, tipping the nose and the neck needs to be a lot softer. Like that's tipping the nose and the neck at a standstill. Okay, I'd like to be able to do that at a walk. And then when I put that left leg on her, it'll step her that way. Okay, that sets up for those leg yields. She's just not prepared for that. She's got way too much brace in her. He's just way too heavy on this stuff. But we can't do a lot about that right now as far as more pressure goes, because you'll elicit the fight. There ain't nothing there. Just me and you. Just me and you. There you go. Okay. Yeah, see, you're all right. You just uh, you'd elicit all that fight. Trying to get something happening. We're not really trying to get a whole lot to happen. We're kind of just setting stuff up and allowing these little glimmers to happen. You start getting a little softer in that nose. There we go. We're going to just keep winning. Now, I want to share a little thought and idea. There's stuff where we get this, we're getting ready uh, in two weeks to go to Road to the Horse. So I'm coaching Tick Maynard for Road to the Horse. Very exciting. Things like Road to the Horse, we got the Mustang Makeover Challenge where it's 100 days. Look at what they did with that Mustang in 100 days. Yeah, 100 days, but how many hours a day? How many hours a day? Not one, not two, not five. Maybe six. Some of those top guys, they do two. They spend six hours on the one and six hours on the other, doing lots of different little things. So we're spending maybe an hour a day with this horse, and you guys are seeing full, full training sessions in this process. So uh, we don't do that that kind of training here because no, I don't want to do that and. Most of how everything is structured here, you're paying for hours, not product. Okay? Not doing, turning and promising product. Unless you're buying a baby horse, right? That's already done product. But these training horses, it's just time. You gotta take time. So, just thoughts and ideas to share with you as we wrap up here. Little things that we think about. Okay, I hope you guys are enjoying all of this. <clears throat> we're going to just keep on tootling along. It's exciting that today we got to put a little bit of leg in there, a little bit of life in the leg, and that'll start coming a little more, a little more before you know it, when I can start stepping her out with a little more life, it will just kind of be allowed to release her to a trot versus right now we did a whole lot. I kind of find myself making trouble. Okay. Oh man, all the horses are calling. Must be dinner time. All right, I'm Jake, riding Remy. We're at Pear Tree Ranch, and we'll see you next time.